So now we'll describe Rosetta. So Rosetta was this, uh, introduced in CASP 4, CASP 5, and it was clearly together one of the first methods that successfully applied fragment assembly for ab initio structure predictions. And uh, there was other programs around at the same time, Fragful by David Jones, and there was also work by Jim Bowie earlier. But, they, but none of these really caught on as much as, as Fragful did, as Rosetta did. So the whole idea of Rosetta and other programs here is that you uh, is that you can divide the problem of protocol into two problems. You have a local problem and a global problem. And um, the local confirmation are largely dependent on the local sequence. Yeah. And this is a finite number of uh, um, confirmations. I mean, the obvious ones are sheets and helices, but there are other types of things. And, and it's not obvious that the same sequence always is in a helix. But they have a sub given local sequence have only a small limited set of possible confirmations. And then the global problem is basically hydrophobicity. You want to optimize hydrophobicity, avoiding overlap and breaking secondary structure. So what you do is basically that you take, uh, I mean, so you have the idea that so you have some kind of nucleation, so this hydrophobic collapse and you get assembled them together. So you start with having your sequence and you find possible fragments and you combine these fragments using a Monte Carlo simulation to assemble your protein. So in details, it looks more like this. First, you select fragments. So here you can see up to the left, you see a sequence and you select possible fragments. You see that all, so the, each column there describes one short fragment of your protein. And you can see that in these cases, the dark blue fragment beginning actually can be it's mainly extended, but the green one in the middle is always a helix. And the yellow one is resembling a loop, but it's a different type of loops. So they all look the same, but there are some are loop signs. There are some, each fragment has some structural preferences, but it's not just one single sequence. Secondly, you assemble these fragments by basically taking your sequence, putting in the fragment, seeing if the, if the model is better, and if it, if it, you keep it, otherwise it's thrown away, and you deeper do this for thousands of times. And then you do this many, many times, and then you calculate possible sets of uh, models, and you try to define the best one by looking at the end. So, the model in Rosetta is what's called is basically uh, backbone angles. You have spherical coordinates describing the phi psi angles, and uh, have a simplified psi chain with just one or two atoms. So, uh, as I said, the fragment library comes from those structures. So basically, you do search. So this is a key thing here, you're actually not doing a homologous search. So when you test this, you test it, you don't have a homolog. You don't find homologs. If you don't find homologs, you could use it and you could do much better, but that's not really when your setup is used. Or when it's useful. Because of course, you use a homology, you can use a whole sequence as I said. So you extract this local, local structure from PDB. As I, said, as I said, you can look differently for different parts of the protein. And uh, uh, You generate all these possible fragments, and uh, normally in the result, you use two fragment lengths. You have fragment lengths of three and fragment lengths of nine. Uh, and you basically find this fragment by sequence similarity. So you do a fast sequence search, right? but it's, it's no gap alignment, so you can use proper proof alignments, you can find whatever you want, but you do a sequence search. But this is a local one, you only find short, short fragments. And you should not have any homologous proteins in your database. And then you have a good potential function that describes the uh, probability that the structure is correct, basically. And it has a number of terms that are weighted to get in a Bayesian way. You can look at Bayesian statistics if you want to. Um, and it has a use, reduced representation of each form of protein, one center per side chain, and it has a, a number of terms, observation, parasite interactions, Hadron bond between strands, etc., etc. And my well, Rosetta data are hundreds of terms in there as a way to put them all together. So that has been optimized and tested many, many times in many proteins. But it's basically it's a Bayesian description of what is probability to find this confirmation in the, in the native structure. And then you regenerate, run this thousands or even hundreds of times, and you generate what you call decoys, and you filter these to find organic energy. And actually, what you do is you also clustering. So you basically see if you have many times you run the same simulation and get the same answer, you're most likely correct. 
So basically, you can compare all the models with other and you find the largest cluster. So how well this does work? So this is just some examples from one CTF. And uh, you see that you have uh, the native structure that has minus 10 as in score. And you have the lo lowest energy structures is, is has minus 8 or something. And most of the lowest energy structures are obviously 2 and 3 ohms from RST. Which is okay. It would look the same. It would look the same. And uh, so this is this is a similar structure as well. So the, you see that the native structure has three beta sheets and three helices, and also the best deco has it. The best structure finder is not perfectly the same. This has some helix looks a bit longer, it's not, or a bit shorter maybe, and it's a bit different angle than other helix. And the beta sheet is not exactly the same, but it's, it's rather similar. However, the structure of seven eight ohms from away, as you see there, is has some parts of assembly, but it's not at all correct. For the package, not correct. So, of course, they run this, and for larger decoys, they found the best one was very similar to the latent structure, but not always. In some cases, you find something that is not as good as you see here, it's like in one MSI, it was only ranked at 29 at 1000. 